Hey guys, how's it going? Bringing you another circuits video here. So this time I'm going to talk about like the main high level differences between AC and DC. Um, I know you can go online and basically find a million different articles and even look on Wikipedia to see the difference, but sometimes it's just easier for somebody to just talk it through and just give you some examples. So that's the main goal here. So AC it stands for alternating current which means the current is going to be alternating directions, positive and negative, positive and negative. DC stands for direct current, which means the current is always going to be flowing in the same direction for all time. So I've drawn two different circuits here. These are very, very basic uh, elementary circuits. You have a source and then a load, or a voltage source. In this case, it's an alternating voltage source uh, with a resistor, which is our load. Uh, it could be a light bulb, it could be it could be anything. This could be a power plant and this could be a like a city or a, a building or you know uh, obviously a power plant is going to be much larger than 120 volts, but uh, just to give you an example. In this case we have the same voltage except we're using a DC voltage source. So um, just got two different circuits here and we're going to talk through them both. So in the US, uh, our power grid runs on 60 hertz, so all the electricity going to uh, from a power plant to kind of a switch yard and you know getting stepped down from there onto power lines going through your neighborhood, running to your businesses, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is all running on 60 hertz. So if we assume we're looking at the power in your house, which is 120 volt, 60 hertz AC power or voltage. Um, that's what this circuit here is going to represent. And let's just assume that if we're going to plot this, we're going to look at both sides of the spectrum. So we're going to do positive 120 volts and negative 120 volts. So let's assume we're going to slow time down all the way to one period of this alternating current so uh, alternating voltage source and we're gonna plot 1 1 60th of a second and half a period would actually be 1 1 20th of a second so if we assume the voltage source starts off positive we can say that the power across the resistor or the voltage across the resistor is going to follow this notation the current is going to be leaving the positive side of the voltage source, flowing clockwise, going down through the resistor, and back around the other side into the negative terminal of the source. So if we follow on the timeline, what that's actually going to look like is this then at this time here it's actually going to cross the x-axis and it's going to turn into a negative voltage all the way until it reaches negative 120 volts and then it's going to change direction at this halfway point here so if i draw what our what our plot is going to look like now on the circuit What that actually means is that the positive terminal is going to be here. And the way I like to think about the positive side of a battery or source is that it pushes current, whereas the negative side sucks current in. So positive is pushing. It's going to come up this side of the resistor. The drop across the resistor is going to be in the upward direction, and then the current is going to flow back into the negative terminal of the voltage source. And then if we continue for one full cycle, it's going to go back up, and it's going to be 120 volts again at 1 1 60th of a second. So this is one full period for 1 1 60th of a second. This is going to happen 60 times for every one second of time. So if you look at a light bulb, for example... that has a filament inside excuse my bad artwork 
um, what we're going to see here is that whenever we're in this section, the positive section of the timeline, we can draw the polarity on the light bulb like this. So the current is going to be coming up the positive side, flowing in the clockwise direction, and coming back down the negative side. Then as soon as we cross the x-axis here, and we're now in the negative portion, I'm actually going to change direction. First, a polarity is going to change. So the polarity is going to be positive on the right side, negative on this side positive is pushing current it's going to go up this way around the light bulb and down the other side so I remember when I first discovered AC circuits I had no idea that every light bulb in the house has the electricity flowing back and forth back and forth 60 times a second but it happens so fast you actually can't see it so for every one second you're going back and forth back and forth back and forth 60 times and the light bulb is a passive circuit element, so it doesn't care about polarity or direction. As long as there's current flowing across it one way or another, it's going to light up the room. So it just, it just doesn't care about the polarity. DC, on the other hand, this should be a lot easier to analyze because I have the positive on the top here. It's going to be pushing current in this direction. It's going to be going down through the resistor, like so and back the other side. So if I actually draw my voltage plot, I'm actually going to have 120 volts for all time. So in a nutshell, that's the basic differences between AC and DC in a circuit. I hope this was helpful.